Italy once had an incredible amount of keyboard manufacturers, until in the late 80s an entire industry collapsed. Today only a shadow of its former glory remains. But if you travel back to the 80s, even on a budget, you can find incredible sounds such as this. Hi, I'm Jochen and I'm a huge history nerd. Both Heimbach and Alex Ball have explored the beautiful soundscapes of the ancient Italian synthesizers and when I saw these breathtaking machines I was really impressed by it. So I thought I would do my own take on it. In the keyboard range and on a small budget. Since I live in a country nearby, Italian keyboards pop up quite often. So I got the very worst and very best keyboard that I have ever played on. And they both tell their part of the story of a decline of an entire industry. But first I want to tell you the story behind it. So if you can't stand my German accent for this long, check out the chapters or maybe you want to see me exploring synthesizers in the wild. Italy once quite likely was the country with the most electronic instrument companies in the world. If you have watched Heinbach's and Alex Ball's great videos about the Italian synths, you will know that it was just the Marche region of Italy that held most of these companies. But how could one small stretch of land at the Adriatic coast become such a hub for electronic instruments? When production began in the 50s and 60s, Italy was a quite poor country. Yet it had a quickly developing cultural scene, which is internationally best known for its western movies. The first compact Italian synthesizer, and one of the earliest somewhat portable synthesizers at all, was created in 1963. Even before early electronic instruments like the Hammond organ had begun to be popular. But these were very expensive for Italian standards. In come the instrument builders of the Marche region. The strip of land had an old tradition of small-scale industrial workshops for things like furniture, shoes and accordions. These small businesses were highly adaptable and when electronic organs, rhythm and accompaniment machines became popular, the accordion builders of the Marche region quickly joined the new trend. While initially these instruments were built for the domestic market, they soon became internationally competitive, since Italian workforce was cheap compared to other Western countries. The 70s were what the people of the Museo del Sint Marchegiano call the golden era. Several brands of electronic organs, synthesizers and string machines became internationally successful, most notably Fafisa, Krumar, Elka, CRB and Eco. But ahead was a revolution that would shake the market to its foundations. Keyboards! With the introduction of integrated circuits, the era of bulky organs with huge hand-soldered circuit boards found an end. When Casio and Yamaha both began mass production of compact and inexpensive instruments, suddenly the small Italian companies were facing big troubles. The early 80s still saw Italy's most prominent synthesizer, the LK Synthex, compete with the Prophet, Jupiter 8 and Memory Moog. But soon after, when the digital Yamaha DX7 revolutionized the synthesizer market, the Marche companies fell behind. In an attempt to fight the rising Japanese competition, many companies merged. Keyboard manufacturer Seal, on the other hand, was bought up by Roland and kept producing keyboards like the E series. Many other companies must have ceased to exist, but it was hard finding relying information about most of them. To find out a bit more about what was going on there in the late 80s, I got two keyboards. This is the Bon Tempi Music Partner MRS-49. There is so little known about this keyboard that I couldn't even find what year it came out. But I'm quite sure it was produced in the second half of the 1980s. 
During that time, Bontempi was among the biggest instrument companies of the Marke region. They even had taken over the famous organ builder Farfisa in 1984. Bontempi itself was rather focusing the entry-level market. Their fan organs from the 60s and 70s were made for hobby musicians and kids rather than for professional musicians. When keyboards became the first choice as an entry-level instrument, Bontempi soon joined the trend. The MRS-49 confirms that Bontempi was focusing the lowest end of the price range. The sounds are dull, the selection of rhythms is minimal, the SF Orchestra is just a rip-off of Yamaha's duet function and the build quality is abysmal. Compared to my keyboards from Casio and Yamaha, this is easily the worst keyboard in my collection. Nonetheless, Montempi's toy instruments remained popular over the decades. The other one that I got is the LK EH-105. And quite easily, it is the best 80s arranger keyboard that I own. In the 70s, Elka was an internationally successful brand in the premium sector. Instruments like the Rhapsody String Machine were used by musicians like Jean-Michel Jarre, Vangelis and many other famous musicians. But in the 80s, they started to fall behind. Reading in between the lines of the user manual, you can get a sense of their struggles with their digital competition from Far East. Elka has been manufacturing electronic home organs for almost 25 years and still holds a leading position in this instrument category. Many factors have contributed to this, such as excellent quality, but also very Elka-specific factors, such as orientation towards European wishes and tastes. Especially in the age of the computer, it is unfortunately all too often forgotten that a home keyboard is a musical instrument played by a musician or music lover, and not a computer system controlled by a computer scientist. The EH-105 is a beautiful instrument. Its build quality is on par with Yamaha's and Roland's flagship synthesizers. It has all the features you could wish for in a keyboard. Custom rhythms and sounds, a ton of presets and accompaniment variations. And the sound has a fat low end that you would never expect in an arranger keyboard of that era. It is sad to know that just three years later, in 1989, the glory of Elka ceased to exist. The company was bought by another Marke company called General Music, which kept producing digital keyboards under the GEM branding until it finally went bankrupt in 2011. There is no happy end. To my knowledge, only two of the Marke electronic instrument companies remain today. One is Bontempi. They are still making cheap and uninspiring toys, even though they also had to file bankruptcy in 2014. The other one is Fatar. Since 1956, they produce high-quality keyboards that go into keyboards of other companies. I mean, the actual keyboards that are in... you get it. But the revolutionary electronic sounds of the Marke region have faded. Thinking about this makes me sad. What awesome synthesizers would the great engineers of Krumar, CRB or Elka have come up with if the DX7s, computers and DAWs hadn't destroyed their industry? How many jobs were lost? How many dreams were destroyed when one company after the other went out of business? So all that's left is nostalgia. But luckily, you can pick up an 80s keyboard from Italy for quite cheap. And if you have the necessary space, you might even get a legendary Farfisa organ for free. While you won't find an LK Syntex that easily, I really recommend you to pick up one of the other LK keyboards if you ever stumble upon one. Because I have really fallen in love with the EH-105. You will definitely hear more from it on my channel. 
But that's for another video, once I have replaced the internal battery, so stay tuned for that. For the moment I hope you enjoyed this little piece of history about some manufacturers that really deserve more attention. It was really hard finding any information about them, even though I researched quite a lot. So if I got something wrong or you have more information about them, let me know in the comments. And let me know about your experiences with Italian keyboards. But that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more synths and sounds.